Hello, and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager. And in this week's Weekend Essay Podcast, we have reporter Mamadou Moussa Toure asking, how fair is the three strikes rule for income protection? Take it away, Mamadou. Weekend essay. How fair is the three strikes rule for income protection? I profess that until recently, I had never heard of the three strikes rule for income protection. This is because it is a little talk about subject in the protection sector. Much of the focus on income protection has been around raising awareness because of the dismal sales figures. Income protection uptake is not as high as other protection products. Several reasons have been offered for the seemingly lack of interest from consumers and advisors. Campaigners argue that consumers don't think they need income protection and advisors perceive it to be complicated. But is there more for this than meets the eye? I'm not here to discuss the pros and cons of income protection. I have already done that in my previous essay where I discuss my income protection journey from skeptic to believer. Here, I want to look at the little known or little discussed three strikes rule for income protection. The rule relates to a scenario when an insurer feels that a client's health, pastime or occupation disclosure put them at a higher risk of claiming on their policy. In that instance, the client request for cover will receive a two-letter word no from the insurer. You can be excluded from income protection cover for several reasons, including depression, back pain, mental health, neurological disorders, and rock climbing, among others. A decline can come from any combination of the three disclosure areas listed above. Industry insiders say you will tend to find that exclusions are mainly based upon health and pastime disclosures. Occupational exclusions are not as common because the insurer will often just decline the application if they are worried about occupational hazards. I recently read a powerful essay on the topic from a leading protection journalist who for obvious reasons I will name in this piece. But their article on the three strikes rule made an impact. The author gave a touching personal account of their dreadful experience with insurers because of the rule. They detailed the difficulties getting an income protection cover from all the leading insurers after their health disclosure. It was a harrowing account to say the least. And all the author wanted was to provide security for their dependents if they were no longer able to work due to illness or disability. It feels unfair and jails with the whole purpose of income protection, i.e. to provide safety net if the worst was to happen. Testimonies like that really pull one's heart strings. This was not a soppy story from a self-entitled journalist. That case study is just one of many in a growing list of people, including industry figures who are denied income protection cover because of the three strikes rule. I understand that insurers are not in the game to provide charitable handouts. I know I'm stating the obvious that profit and the bottom line are what matters to them. And I do understand that insurers are taking this action, however unreasonable it is to some people, because income protection is the most claimed protection product. But this argument is increasingly becoming tenuous. Many leading figures in the protection sector believe that the exclusion policy could do with a review. They argue that insurers should take into consideration a client's needs and avoid a one-size-fits-all underwriting process. I reach out to Catherine Knowles, Managing Director of Specialist Insurer Cura Financial Services, to find out more. She has written extensively on this issue 
and her firm helps provide cover for clients with pre-existing health conditions or hazardous pastimes. She tells me, in quote, we have been looking into this and have found that about three quarters of providers decline once there is more than two medical exclusions. We have had a case referred to us with a person in their 30s, fit and active, that was being declined for income protection. The declines were coming from a knee, a shoulder and hip exclusion. These were sporting injuries, not medical. Their point of view was they aren't going to stop working at their desk job for a sore knee. It will be if they were diagnosed with cancer or had a stroke, end of quote. Nurse, who is a formidable player and influencer in the protection sector, can get income protection cover for herself. Despite helping countless people with pre-existing health conditions, she finds it near impossible to get insurers to change their mind on her. I find that shocking. So many things I am diagnosed with, non-life-threatening, none that have caused me to take any time off work, yet I can't get it, no stares me. She continues, A key point is that insurers shouldn't assume that people won't want to cover if there are a few exclusions. Give people the choice, let them decide what is right for them. If there is worry about understanding of terms and exclusions, then make the option only available through selected advice firms. End of quote. Another insider tells me the whole underwriting process often leaves much to be desired. They say common sense should factor in the underwriting process. And they argue that advisors who are known widely for their straight talking can help apply a bit of common sense and make the process fair. The end. Thank you, Mamadou, for another interesting weekend essay podcast. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as Twitter, LinkedIn, our Facebook, as well as our new Instagram, Money Marketing Mag. See you next time.